Hey everybody, it's Austin Ward. We're back for another Letterman Live brought to you by Buyers Auto. Uh, we had a, I think we had a waiting list for people that wanted to get on this show this week after what happened on Saturday. 62-39, Ohio State wins the Big Ten East. They win the gold pants. They beat rival Michigan. Uh, they're playing Saturday against Northwestern, but it, it almost feels like this team has turned the corner now for something uh, to chase even bigger down the stretch, but we can get into all of that. We actually we have George Kaufman with us uh, for his perspective from Buyers Auto today. He's down there on my far left. Evan Spencer there next to him, the former Ohio State wide receiver. Uh, he's got some thoughts, I think, about a lot of guys who scored some Just touchdowns on Saturday. Jeremy Birmingham from Letterman Row. Our, I don't remember what title you give guy. yourself. No, that, guy. Was, that was a great title guy. last week. Yeah, <laughs> recruiting guy, yeah. recruiting consigliere <laughs> guru. Uh, and then right here, you guys know him too, Zach Bourne. If you've missed his uh, Buckeye cues on the defense, you've been missing out all season long. Evan Spencer's going to have one this week later on with Chris Olave. Uh, so why not start there? Legends are made in the game. Oh, yeah. Evan and uh, Chris Olave has put his name all over it. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, before the game even started, I was having the opportunity to say, like, you know, the stage is always set. You know, when we play a team up north for one person that, you know, a name that might not be familiar or, you know, that one individual that was able to change the momentum or change the game, you know, there's always one of those stories and or a couple of those stories yeah. in this game. So, you know, obviously very happy for Chris. I'm glad it came from the receiver room, but more importantly, right, the ability to compete, the ability to say, listen, I'm going to affect this game more than just catching a football, right? You know, that, that, that takes, a you know, a, a really strong um, you know, mine to really say, hey, I got to humble myself from time to time, but it's because my team needs me. So that was really impressive to see. I feel like it had, had to start there, but you know, George, what was your number one takeaway there on Saturday? After you get your name up to celebrate your birthday, I mean, that was obviously the highlight of the day. I, I but saw, That was my highlight of the day. <laughs> Did you see it? Yeah, I had a salute and had a little cheers next to my buddy, had a beer in the stadium on I you. I, uh, I did not see it, but uh, I was in the beer line, actually. It takes 45 oh, minutes well, to get a beer right. in that stadium. If you're going to miss it, it's true. that's a good but, I, I mean, a lot of it. I mean, with the block punt and it was a return for a touchdown. I mean, if that doesn't fire up a team, I don't know what does. Um, his performance was excellent. I, I mean, across the board, in, in my opinion, the uh, we, we spotted them a touchdown, and I think I thought the officiating was horrendous. I think the the refs spotted them a touchdown. So I think the beatdown was even worse than what the score actually says. Um, and to see this team firing all cylinders like that, it, it's so good to see. I mean, it was. I, I'm still smiling from it. It's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, that you mentioned that, George, with the score. It could have been worse. Berm and I were talking about that the other day. It could have been 76 to 25. We take it some drives for Ohio State that didn't, you know, wind up in the end zone. The Tate Martell package. Uh, Berm can put it on his counter right take, there. Take counter. I, and that was, I mean, exactly what you predicted last week, right? Yeah, I mean, I said if, if Ohio State kept Dwayne Haskins Don't let upright, him get out they, they would win. Say, <laughs> as long as they keep Dwayne upright, they'll win the game. And the offensive line was so much better than I think anybody expected them to be. Berm, you know Don't what let they it say go. when we played, right? The eye in the sky never lies. Right? That, means, that means the film never lies. We have film of, what, of our... Uh, to uh, the uh, tape! <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, here's the thing, yeah. though. Buck I think, IQ of Berm. I think what, what I... My biggest takeaway from Saturday was how... Two months of uninspired, kind of melancholy football can make you forget how much better Ohio State is than Michigan um, because that team has so much more talent in the locker room. And I think all year long you kind of lose it as you watch the, the different matchups and how they play out. But Ohio State is loaded. And for the first time all year we witnessed the power of a fully armed and operational Death Star. And it was, <laughs> it was something totally different. Well, we talked about it last week. I think it's one of those things where the offense, defense, and special teams, all three of those units had not put a full game together. They finally did. And then the, our other big uh, topic that we talked about last week is there hasn't been a game yet where this team's had to get right. up, right? This, the Iowa's, the Purdue's, games like that are the games that, they, that these teams lose. You know, it's the uninspired games where you're going out and you know you're going to get the team's 110%, you're going to get their best shot. And we go out almost uninspired. There hasn't been a game this year for Ohio State to get up for besides maybe TCU and Penn State. Yeah, yeah we, I said it last week. I could have taken a nap on the field at Maryland five minutes before the game kicked off. Yeah. It was so blah in that stadium that, so it's and like hard. i said last week that was the road beers it wasn't anything. no no but it wasn't it was it was still the pizza nugs from michigan <laughs> <No>. state <laughs> wow <laughs> okay moving well, on way though. back yeah Let, let's let's just move ahead here let's just, not worry about michigan anymore <laughs> well you don't have to anymore they're out of the race yeah. like this is this is now the new debate here there's new playoff rankings uh you know ohio state is sitting in a position now where if they win on saturday 
I don't know how impressive it has to be if they need Oklahoma to lose, if it would help if any of the other guys, if they need Alabama to knock Georgia out. I don't know. I made predictions about that last year, and I was wrong because Ohio State's resume was better than Alabama's, and they didn't get in. I don't, I'm not going to make any prediction about that, but you both touched on a point here. The way Ohio State is playing now after everyone counted them out, they got to be an underdog. I think that helped them refocus. They look like a national title team again. That was As I left the horseshoe on Saturday, George, that's what I thought. This team could go out, and if you have Dwayne Haskins, you can beat Alabama. You can beat Clemson because he gives you a shot to beat anybody. Absolutely. <clears throat> and I think uh, one of you touched on the performance of the offensive Probably line. <laughs> yeah. Sure it was Burn. <laughs> but if the offensive line plays like they did against Michigan, um, at least offensively, I think we can really play with anyone. We can put points on anyone. Um, and that's a big thing. And, and, you know, all the talk this morning in the last couple of days has been Oklahoma, Ohio State, who's going to get the, the nod. Mm -hmm. um, Big 12, I'm sorry, just is I, – I, they don't excite me. Um, and I'm obviously a little biased, born and raised Buckeye. But uh, and, and Northwestern, they've earned the right to be there. Everyone's kind of saying, well, Ohio State's playing – at least Oklahoma's playing Texas. That's a marquee name. Mm -hmm. But um, but Northwestern's earned the right to be there, and, and um, I don't think we necessarily need to, to thump them to death in order to get in. Um, and and I, honestly, I think Oklahoma, I mean, they already lost to Texas once. Um, I don't see again. why they could, couldn't lose again. Well, yeah. bo both of you kind of touched on it. It's everyone circling Alabama, Georgia, and Texas, Oklahoma, right? Those are the two games that everyone's circling this, this weekend. I hate to say it, and I'm going to go on camera, right? The, the <laughs> eye in the sky never yeah, lies. Let's, let's He's putting his own this film on resume. This football team has been terrible the past two weeks, mm -hmm. like atrocious, has been so bad that we saw what they could do against Notre Dame. We yeah. saw they should have beat Notre Dame. They beat Syracuse. It, they beat Syracuse. They did. If Pitt comes out and is able to run the football, somehow, some way, is able to run the football, they can knock off Clemson. And I really think they've got a legitimate chance if they can dominate the time of possession in that game. But doesn't Clemson fall into the same conversation that Bama does, where if they lose once, but, they still may get in? No, this is because the I think the ACC, is the, the, the ACC is the worst it's conference awful. in college football. I People want to bring up the Pac-12, the Big 12, and, and those they want to bring up those two, and they say the Big 10. In my mind, the ACC hands down is the it's, worst conference in college you're football. You're not going to get a disagreement. This, and this is the terrible. problem. This is the problem, Burham, with the selection committee. And I've said this on other shows and other years. It's not the end result. The last week, it's the weeks in between. When they start the show in October, when they keep doing it throughout November, they are creating a narrative about these teams, and it's sure. what they've said week after week. We believe Alabama and Clemson are clearly the top two teams in the country, and they've said it every single week. Well. I'm sorry, but what did Alabama do to necessarily earn that against the Citadel? Mm -hmm. Or Clemson when they've, I mean, they've played well, yeah. but they didn't necessarily play well against Syracuse. Like, you can pick any game you want, but if you have said that over and over, now you've conditioned people to say, well, they're automatically in if they lose. I think Zach's right. If they, if they drop that game to Pitt, you knock them out. The ACC doesn't deserve that benefit of the doubt. Um, but we could do that for like half an hour. I don't think sure, we should. Yeah. My, my question then for, is for Evan, because we're now a few years removed from this. And when you're a captain of a team going into a Big Ten championship game, of course you're going to say, we don't pay any attention to the playoff <laughs> rankings. We are not listening to the people that say you have to win by 59 points to get in. Is that true? Did you guys feel like you had to prove anything? I mean, okay, so to say that there was a, a number, right, the 59 to nothing that we had to do to get in, that was of no focus of ours, right? But at the end of the day, we knew that it needed to be convincing. You know, I, I don't. So think, you guys felt that, right? But I don't think there's a quantitative measure to like that level of convincing. But it needed to be, you know, certain with us leaving that field that we were one of the four best teams in the mm. country, right? And you know, it was a personal point, you know, by myself and other captains and other people on the team that, you know, gosh darn it, we are going to show ourselves as the, you know, one of the top four best teams in the country, and we did so, right? So I think that's going to have to be the focus, the mentality of the leadership and, you know, of the guys at Ohio State. But, <clears throat> you know, that said, there's still going to be that sliver of objectivity, right? Mm -hmm. you know, so at the end of the day, that conversation is still going to come up. And, you know, to, to slightly play devil's advocate, somebody could say, well, this loss in the ACC, once it comes down to an objective measure, once we're looking at the loss that you had in the Big Ten with the relation to their overall record and this, that, and the other, it might be apples to apples. Who knows? All I'm saying is... You know, there, 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 there's a grand picture. So with that, make it convincing. Beat the, you know, the ever-living breaks out of that. Make Dwayne have his best day ever. 
the defense is 20 sacks. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating <laughs> right. here, but you know, you well, that's what you guys did in 14. Exactly. You exaggerated. Exactly. Yeah. So we made it, we made sure that everybody watching that game knew what was up. Right. You know, and, and if we can do that, we put ourselves with the best foot forward, but unfortunately we need some stuff to happen. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. Uh, because you guys have mentioned this as well, that, you know, Northwestern, you know, if you compare that to Texas, George, it's not going to look the most impressive, you know, that they did get in by winning the West, but the West was pretty garbage, you know, that Northwestern is averaging less than 24 points per game. It's hard to even believe that you could win a division that way. Um, so I, I think that Ohio State will be relying on the fact that they sent that 59 to nothing message last week, that everybody has it in their mind that that's what they did against a playoff team, the number four team in the playoff rankings. I think that that's the one that's going to have to carry the weight. And if you win a conference championship on top of that, that's supposed to be a tiebreaker. So, yeah, but I also don't. Uh, people also want to bring up the SEC, and they beat a top twenty-five team like Florida, who has three losses on a year, or the Texas A&M team that's got three, four losses, I believe, on the year. This is a top twenty team in Northwestern, right? right. So, if Ohio State in the Big Ten isn't getting uh, yeah. any credit for winning the Big Ten championship and beating the top twenty team. Why should the SEC get credit for beating a four-loss Texas A&M team? Well, and or why should Oklahoma team? get credit for beating a three-loss right. Texas team exactly. in, the, in the terrible yeah. Big 12 South? Exactly. And, and it speaks to the narrative that you're talking about, right? When you put these people on a pedestal, or you're saying they're playing the Citadels, but they're still the best-performing team this week. Mm -hmm. You know, it's difficult to make that then separation once it's later on and you're looking at Zach's example. So, you know, I, I think it's well, a really let, important point. Let's be honest, too. It, three weeks ago... Clemson, B.C. was college game day. And everyone's like, oh, my God, Clemson dominated B.C. <laughs> B.C.'s a four-loss team that just got doubled what? up by Syracuse. 42-21 this past week. I know that was a good bet. I made it. It was a great bet. <laughs> but it's one of those things where how are they – Clemson all of a sudden is getting – Clemson, Alabama, right? Those are the top two that get um, kind of preferential treatment based off of their wins when their wins aren't better than anyone else's. What's weird to me about that preferential treatment is that everybody has this uh, belief that Ohio State's brand gives them the benefit of the doubt. You look at the history of the playoff. I really don't think that's the case. It's I mean, it was case. definitely trumped by Alabama last year. I think you can make a case that, th that people wanted to make that case when it came down to Penn State and them two years ago, but uh, that wasn't really the reality. Didn't get them in 2015 when they lost so to Michigan it's, State. It's hurt, yeah. it's hurt them more than it's helped them. And if it comes down to it this week, and if we're talking – hypothetically, against Ohio State and Oklahoma. I mean, Oklahoma's defense, for everything that we've said in this room on Letterman Live brought to you by Byers Auto all year long about Ohio State's defense, my Lord, Oklahoma is the worst I think I've ever seen from a Power 5 team. And it's like, well, it doesn't matter because Kyler Murray's out there. And the, and the playoff committee says the same thing, that, oh, they score enough points to win. Well, do, isn't that what Ohio State does? And they're a better defense. I, just, it's, I, I said I was going to stop talking about the committee, but it just... There's well, no perfect system. You know, it, it, when it was the BCS era, everyone complained that, well, the computers are making the, the, the decisions, and that's not fair. Right. So now it's it's the human decision, and now everyone's pissed that it's a human decision. <laughs> well, if so there's I mean, one thing that history has proven over and over again, it's that when you let humans decide the fate of something, it generally goes perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> 60% well, of the time, yeah. it works all the time. Well, it, I, hate to, I hate to bring up this topic. We've talked about it this year. I hate bringing it up, but... It seems like this year, everyone is going against Ohio State for some reason. Oh, well, I know feel, the reason. Oh, no, but no, <laughs> in I, every no, way. No, in every way. In every, it hasn't been like that in the past. A lot of times people are pushing Ohio State because it's a huge name. It's like Ohio State, Alabama, they push for that to happen. I feel like everyone this year is trying to force Ohio State out of the top four because of everything that happened with Urban Meyer and Zach Smith. I, I feel like that totally no one agree. wants would, Ohio State to be successful agree. because of everything that happened. 100% agree. To, nobody wants to have to be forced to write about a redemption story about exactly. Urban Meyer or how this team or basically say, adversity. oh my God, we were all idiots and wrong. Well, <laughs> that, I just yeah, don't think, that too. Uh, there, nobody not, wants to write a story about how that team overcame adversity because m much of it is self-imposed adversity. So I think it's just people well, want to... The, the beauty is that if you're not lazy, you don't have to write it as a redemption story of Urban Meyer. You also don't have to write about all the other missteps that people may have made in covering Ohio State or what Ohio State may have done wrong uh, with Zach Smith and keeping him on staff. Guess what? You don't have to do that anymore. Ohio State has paid its price that's for that. That's what gets you clicks, buddy. Well, it is, okay. but I've never seen... Good I've thing we're not seen, chasing that. I've never exactly. seen a network like ESPN negatively almost recruit against Ohio State. I've never seen them 
shine so much negativity on a program for so long on a story that's not even really there anymore. Well, they've, they've been doing that since 2011. I mean, they have, <laughs> they have, but you've seen throughout the years where, you know, I almost feel like they were pushing Ohio State in 2014 right. a little bit. Granted, they wanted them to be in. It was the first ever college football playoff. It would have been huge. Alabama, Ohio State, first matchup, right? Oregon, Florida State, it's a huge matchup. They try and push the big programs because it brings in more money, brings in bigger viewership, which is which it's shocks me. Ratings. It's all about ratings, which also shocks me from last year because they cut off the whole northern and western United States. Worst ratings ever. It, it, it was. It was pretty bad, right? And so my thing is, what? why is ESPN almost going back to that when they know the college football playoff is all about ratings? But maybe they've found a different recipe, which is to badmouth Ohio State all year long and then still put them in the playoffs so they get it on both ends. <laughs> yeah. They, they can... Don't they, point, don't they own the yeah, SEC you, you get the hate clicks. Like they own the SEC. The, they do, yeah. ESPN does, yes. Yeah. You get the, hate, the, ACC you get the hate clicks yes. all year yeah. long. Yeah. You get the hate clicks all year long and the hate views, and then you still put them in to get right. people to watch. So well, uh, fortunately, at Letterman... I mean, it's like... It's like CNN and Fox, right? The ESPN, ESPN, ESPN is SEC and ACC, and then the but Fox owns the Big 12 and ESPN Big 10. ESPN and ABC also have a major stake in the Big 10. I mean, so there's obviously a lot of political whatever involved, but... Well, it's amazing how often they, they flip-flop, too. It comes down to, if you talk about Ohio State, people react. The uh, I'll never say his name, but the goofy... The southern guy with the huge ears. The, the guy, yeah. Guts. yeah. He refused to say his name. This morning on Go Luck and Wingo, he picked, he said it comes down to it, and I was voting. He goes, I'd take Ohio State over Oklahoma. There's been and that I almost gr- wrecked my car. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he's got me on drugs. He, well, he, fortunately, there were a lot I more cars in the lot. Yeah. He, he's out there you ever listen to his show? Yeah. He wants to keep pushing. It's his, like he's, redneck uh, TV. Yeah. Okay, so it's I, awful. I, I no, like, that's called Jerry Springer. I feel like he's almost, <laughs> I've been there. Like, you know, that's your character. It, that's fine. You know, be natural. But you know, there's, there's a little, there's a little phoniness in there. I, I, I think there's a lot of phoniness in there. Yeah. The, um, the last thing on that with these networks and the coverage of the team, I, I, I hate to even bring it up as Zach said, but when you look at two weeks ago, the amount of shots of Urban Meyer grabbing his head and reacting on the sideline. George, you know this. Evan, Zach, you both spent a ton of time around Urban, as I have. I think it was like almost criminal what they did to him on that day because the one I've seen from the last few weeks is an Urban Meyer who is feeling better, who's managing uh, that pain a little bit better. I think he's got a different routine uh, from what some people close to Urban have been talking about. And he has always, 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 you guys know this from the practice field, reacted in extreme measures, yeah. fist pumps, uh, standing away from the huddle on the sideline, taking the headset off or getting his hands on his knees. Like, I don't understand how all of a sudden it's like Urban is doing things out of the ordinary. There, this is what he has always done. Mm-hmm. That's not a sign of pain that he's holding his head. He did that 15 right. years ago. Right. No, totally. I mean, trust me, Coach Meyer is, is, is very outward with his personality and expressions, um, and he's always <laughs> been that way. Um, and he might even get a little sm- <laughs> smirk to that one because – you know, I, I feel like a, a little bit as you're coming off the field and if you messed up or if it's something that you know that, you, you know, you're supposed to know, sometimes you need that little kick in the ass to say, OK, hey, coach is on me now. You know, I, I, I see the pulling back of the hair or the pacing or <laughs> that you know, one, the, yeah. the, the, the throwing of a headset. Right. You know, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it, it, it's all it's all in it. Right. It's about teamwork. It's about discipline. It's about doing the right thing, doing your job when your number's called and. You know, everybody's got different ways to skin the cat. And, you know, and, and in his specific instance, right, these are the ways that he expresses himself because it's natural to him. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just unfortunate that obviously, you know, it, it, it's a detriment to his health sometimes. Well, I also think it's funny that people are writing articles this week saying Urban Meyer's fine, he's looking normal, he's feeling normal, based off the way they played on Saturday. Yeah. Obviously, <laughs> right? He's not, he's not screaming yell. Like, as a head coach, he's when screaming you're... He's screaming yelled a lot on Saturday no, well, in that first half. Yeah, but... You you know, when you're when you play a game like that, obviously you're not going to be have your hands on your on your knees, throwing your headset, being all pissed off. In a tight game, he's going to be pissed off. That that's his job. His job is to almost lead the team, right? And we talked about it before. The players feed off of the head right. coach's personality, right. feed off of his energy. So, like Evan just stated, we're going to know in Maryland when he's going nuts and holding his head yeah. and going crazy. He should be. He's got every right to be. Right. In a Michigan game, when it's against the number one defense and you're absolutely dominating them, mm-hmm. obviously you're going to look healthier. Yeah. 
And that doesn't mean that he's not still in pain. I was trying to, like, yeah. when you say that about the stories, he's not feeling 100% better. He's managing yeah. it better. He's not ever going to be, uh, you know, 100% until maybe he has a surgery or some, something else down the road. That's not for us to decide, or, and I'm not a doctor. I'm not even going to dig into that. But uh, reset it here, Letterman Live, brought to you by Buyers Auto. We've just briefly touched on what's actually going to happen on Saturday at 8 p.m. Uh, so it, let's turn that attention to Ohio State Northwestern, a Big Ten title that is on the line. I said it uh, the other day on Letterman Row, guys, that if you got to pick for the Buckeyes, any team of the West contenders, Northwestern is the one you want to face. I mentioned the amount of points they score. Obviously, they play really good defense. Pat Fitzgerald is going to have uh, his defense ready to go to try and slow down Dwayne Haskins. Uh, get inside that dome and on that fast track, and the way Haskins is playing, though, I don't really like their chances. So uh, what stands out to any of you guys, wherever you want to start, about this matchup, and do you have any concerns for Ohio State if, about this Northwestern team? Um, I, don't, I don't know if I would start with concerns, so to say, but I would just say you know, a, a point to note going forward is that this may be one of the most disciplined teams that we played, you know, we played throughout the entire year, and mm -hmm. that's just a testament to great coaching. You know, I I have a lot of respect for Pat Fitzgerald and what he's been able to do to date. He recruited me out of Chicago, so you know, I, I've I've gotten that chance to have that unique uh, that unique perspective. That said, I'm not making this to say that they got some grandiose team that you know that 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 we just don't see right now. You know, because obviously at the end of the day, they still got to move their chess pieces around the football field. And I don't feel that those are anywhere near, you know, the capabilities of the ones that we have. Um, you know, that said, I, I don't see really much slowing down our offense, but I could definitely see if we're not, you know, if we're expecting to roll the helmets out there, some production on their side of the ball on offense because mm. of just their, you know, their, their, their dedication to discipline and, you know, being in the right spot at the right time and things of that nature. George, you worried? Worried at all? <coughs> um, I know Berm, be there Berm probably thinks the score is going to be like seven to three, <laughs> something crazy. But uh, I, I think this team truly got a taste of what they can be this past Saturday, and it feels good. And it, once uh, I mean the run that you guys did, I mean once they never stopped. Yeah, once it and, starts, and uh, once you feel it and it clicks and and. I have a feeling this team's going to continue to roll. And wherever they, they go to the playoffs, they go to the Rose Bowl. I, I mean, you, anyone can pick on Ohio State all they want. All we've done is continue to win. We, we kicked the crap out of the scumbag, I mean, team up north. <laughs> <laughs> Irvin's undefeated against them. That's but pretty wild. Seven pick on him some more. Yeah. He's playing in the Big Ten Championship game. Pick on him some more. It's like, keep going. We're, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. And, uh, and I got no worries about it. Yeah, I think Evan said it best. It's this is gonna be the most disciplined team that Ohio State plays all year. If it weren't the Big Ten Championship, I would be a little worried because this is <laughs> you know this is that game that right. Ohio State always has that hiccup, right? We've seen it. This is like that team, you right. know, where you don't you aren't super inspired to go play Northwestern, <laughs> but they're a good enough team to come up and disciplined enough to, right. to beat you. Uh, Big Ten Championship, I'm not that worried. Granted, Pat Fischero is going to have these guys ready to play. Um, we see what their strength coaches do on the sidelines and go nuts, <laughs> right? It's been the story all year. But, um, yeah, I mean, George just, just said it. It's once this team gets going and, and once they feel it, they all came together and felt it, what a four-quarter game mm -hmm. of offense, defense, special teams can do, I think they'll be more than fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if this game was in October at Ohio State at noon, be or, or in Chicago or in Evanston at eight o'clock at, at night yeah. on a, you know, <laughs> November third, I'd be like, eh, maybe. But to me, Northwestern is like Michigan State, only less talented, with the exception of Clayton Thorson, who I think is an NFL type quarterback. But I think the Buckeyes will be able to get to him. And I'm not. I don't worry about their skill position guys. They don't have anyone that really scares me as far as in space type of uh, a player. Well, Wait, less talented than yeah. Michigan State? Like defensively, I think, it, the, the way they play. They're going to come out. They're going to be tough. They're going to try to throw punches. But I, they don't have, like, a game changer on defense like uh, Willekes at Michigan State or someone like that that kind of controlled the first quarter of the game in, in East Lansing. If that game was in the Michigan State game would have been in an indoor field in, you know, completely neutral environment, I, I don't think that game's even close as it was. So I think that Northwestern is a, a well-coached team, a good team, but... They haven't played anything like what they're going to see on Saturday. Yeah. And the ability to start having confidence in what the Buckeyes are doing on both sides of the ball, uh, I, I just 
I think they're going to roll them. And Here, I, here's, here's what people don't realize, though. This Northwestern team went on the road at Iowa, which is a tough place to play, and won the game. This is a Northwestern team that should have beat Michigan. We're dominating them sure. in the first half. It's a good football And they didn't score did. any points in the second half. So I, I think from a fan's perspective, don't look at it as a cakewalk. I know from a player's perspective, and Evan will tell you, this is one of those games where – you say, do what? The last thing I want to do is get in a fist fight come the second half. This is a game where you want to jump out from the very yep. beginning, get on top of them quick, get going, get everyone, uh, get the lead, you know, start dominating them early. Because this is a team that will gain confidence as, as the game goes they're, on. They're if not going to be intimidated. No, they will not. They will not. And, you know, people are going to say, oh, well, how can how Michigan beat them? Well, look what we did to Michigan. It's not like that, right? It, it, every game's a new game. And, um, if we don't get on them early, it could be a, a tight ball game. Yeah, for anybody who tries to compare scores, right, you know, that Michigan beat them by this much, we beat Michigan by this much, this, and this is the perfect evaluation of you know, how we're going to compete against them. Know this, we have a different dynamic with every team that we play it, you know, from now until ever. This is, you know, within perpetuity. And that's just because it's, you know, it's who we are. It's how we compete. It's how we've competed throughout history, right? But it's, you know, that, that it's a testament to say everybody who plays us knows that they can further their own program's history by coming in here and winning a game, right? So, you know, for, for individuals who want to make that one-to-one -one comparison, it's far from. The, it, it really is. The transit of property means nothing in football. Matchups mean everything. Northwestern is a good matchup for Ohio State. Right. So... Sounds like I think I know where everyone's going to go with this, but it's that time on Letterman Live brought to you by Buyers Auto where it's time for predictions. I feel like there's going to be five across the board here for Ohio State, but let's hear some numbers. George, let's start with you. <laughs> the gambling expert, are you apparently. Betting, are you right? betting is that, it? Is that what I heard? You, 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 made, it, you made a good pick last week. 13 and a half? I think 13. 13 and a half. And a half. Uh, I'm going to go 55 14, Buckeyes. I think, uh, and I was thinking the same thing as Zach. I, I think they jump up early. Um, I think they're going to go in like. 28-7 at half, and uh, but they can't let their their foot off the gas. They, I think they do need to make a statement, like everyone was saying, and like they, they knew going into their game against Wisconsin that they had to make it make this some style points and make it dominant. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think they score some more in the second half. I, I like it, 55-14. Mm. Evan, what do you got? Man, uh, very similar score. So we can revisit this at a later date. <laughs> but 51 <laughs> to 14. You know, I. I can't give you some uh, grandiose explanation as to why I want to go three or four points shorter, but you know, I, <laughs> yeah, he's like closest without going over right, to win, exactly, some, exactly. win some Letterman Road swag. Yeah, I was kind of salty when he said fifty-five, but no, um, you know, in all seriousness, I I just feel like the productivity on our offense, you know, I don't see much on their defense that's slowing much of that down, um, and you know, I'm starting to see a now confident defense with you know the the pieces that they have right, and they've gotten an entire season to get under their belt with um, the personnel that they now have, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm now, now starting to see some confidence in all of those players. So I think they're going to step up and only hold them to a touchdown or two. Berm. Uh, <laughs> I got like 49-21 or something like that. I think that uh, – I, I think that <laughs> – Oh, man. I something think, like that? Yeah, it's a, in, that, in, that, in, in that ballpark. Okay, I, mean, yeah, I, yeah, I, I could see, I could see a yeah. touchdown swing either way. Yeah, um, right. How does the film work if you Four, don't 49, actually like... 49-28, 49-21, somewhere in there. Um, I think that... I asked for a score. 49-21. Okay, thank so, you. So the eye in the sky says Berm had a Four, guess. 49-21. 40, <laughs> like, like, he goes to his book and he's like, ah, give me yeah. give me a 14-ish point uh, win uh, against the spread. Four, Is that cool with you? Do you mind? Northwestern. Do you mind if I take it? I'm kidding. 49-21, Guys, uh, I, I think that the defense will play similar to what we saw last week. I think Dwayne Haskins is going to have a big day, and I don't think that, that Northwestern has any ability to stop Ohio State from scoring. All right, period. I like it. Um, what worries me, uh, I've, I've talked about it jumping on early, but the other thing that we haven't talked about is this is a spread power running offense, which has given the Ohio State right. defense some issues, right? This, this is a running back who I believe he's a true freshman coming in here and can run the football. From Ohio. Yeah, tough, powerful dude. Um, and they, they throw the ball to their slot receivers a lot, and they're really good at it with the RPOs, and that's what's given Ohio State some issues. Um, yeah, keep away it, is a concern in my life. No doubt. If Ohio State's offense doesn't score every possession to almost start, start the game in the first half, it could get into a – 
all-out fight because this is a Northwestern offense that likes to keep the ball. They'll throw the little slant spot patterns in, um, from the slot. They will have a running back who will get three yards per carry and be perfectly fine with it, and they will try and keep the time of possession and dominate that side. Um, in saying that, um, I think it's going to be like a 38-24 game. I'm going almost right at the spread. Um, it, I think it's. I think it's more. I uh, no. <laughs> I think it. I think it's more. But Ohio State does cover. It's thirteen and a half. So Fourteen <laughs> covers. Um, I think it's one of those things Priorities. where just Northwestern's game plan is going to be dominate the time of possession and keep the ball out of Dwayne Haskins' hands. With what you're seeing, are you suggesting that people should go back and watch the post Minnesota Buckeye cues of that with the slants? And... Do you know what? I think Minnesota is a great game for for Ohio State scout. I think Purdue is a great game for Ohio State scout. Those those two games, maybe a little bit Indiana, Indiana, it's a little bit more scat. Mm -hmm. But those two games specifically is what this Northwestern team is going to do. And this Northwestern team will go into some tight end YY looks, which is what Maryland did to us. And they went YY with a trade and would run to the short side of the field. This Northwestern team is going to take a culmination of Minnesota, Purdue, and Maryland and run it against us Saturday night. Wow, that's interesting. I wish we had just done this uh, on the video board. But you didn't bring it up yesterday. Uh, I, I completely, completely botched it. Yeah. I think maybe that's the other thing that helped last week is that Michigan was unwilling yeah, to break to away from what they, they do. They tried to play the, the ball control game, though, and they did for the most part, but it didn't matter they because couldn't of, run. Ohio State scored yeah, every run. single time. Yeah. They, they tried to run up the middle against Ohio State. Guess what? That's not going to work. So uh, that's, uh, that's some great analysis there, some great scores. Uh, I think I'm rolling with 52-17. Zach, I think, has got the closest one of the bunch. The film never lies. We'll look back at that next week uh, when we will potentially be talking about the college football playoff based on these score projections that we have here from Letterman Live. Brought to you by Byers Auto. That's George Kaufman hanging out with us this week. Evan Spencer, Jeremy Birmingham, Zach Bourne. I'm Austin Ward. We appreciate also, Go I'm ahead. projecting an upset this weekend. Just so you know, well, we, pit, an upset. Pit, pit over Clemson. You're I'm either, yeah, I think actually it's going to be pit over Clemson. I really do. I think it's going to be pit over Clemson. Uh, I'm not going to stand recording, in, right? in Zach's yeah. I'm not really standing do. in Zach's way. When he gets a, yeah. when he gets a prediction going, Texas the show can't beat Oklahoma and all this other stuff. You, actually, sort of let's just go crazy and say Georgia beat Alabama because that could happen. Texas could beat Oklahoma because it could happen. Hey, the world's falling. <laughs> the you world's know, burning. The world's burning. Cats and dogs are hanging out together. Uh, comment below with you know some items that we can have Zach do if none of these things happen, right? You know, so we make this a little bit fun, There's a little engaging. At least one you know, I'm talking about. There's always at least one. Let's just yep. hope it's not in Indianapolis. Yep. I made it all the way to the end of the show before it completely came off the rails. Yep. I think that's a success. I think we did all right. So okay. we'll be back again next week. We'll see who all is hanging out with us. If there's another long list, waiting list to come hang out and talk to you guys about Ohio State football and what happens on Saturday night, 8 p.m. at Northwestern. Oh, can I say one thing? No, you're done. Hey. Letterman, Letterman Row. That's we'll have Go all your coverage. Go to the basketball all... game tomorrow night. Hey. Hey. Tonight, no. tonight, no wage, baby. tonight. Whatever. When are we airing this? This is why I said no that you weren't talking. <laughs> Go to the basketball game. All right, cut it out. We'll see you next week. Go Bucks. <laughs>